In this video, I'll be doing the work energy theorem on a slope or on an incline. Let's take a look at this. If you've missed the first few videos on work energy power, work energy power, basic examples, the work energy theorem just on a flat horizontal surface, please watch that first. But in this example, this is why it's called worked example two, I've got a trolley of mass two kilograms. So they're giving me the mass and it's held at the top of an inclined plane at 30 degrees to the horizontal. Now, it might not be obvious, but they say it is initially held at the top of the plane, which means that the initial velocity of my object is zero, okay? Remember, for work energy power, we care about initial and final velocity because our work energy theorem is equal to the network. The network down in the object is equal to the change in the object's kinetic energy. And kinetic energy involves velocities, speeds. So we have the mass, we have the initial velocity. The trolley is released and rolls down the inclined plane while experiencing a constant frictional force of six newtons. Use the work energy theorem to calculate the speed at, of the trolley after it has rolled 1.5 meters down the inclined plane. Now, the first thing that I always would suggest that you do, teacher tip number one, is draw a free body diagram to represent your situation. You might not think that it's necessary or helpful, but I promise you as the questions get more complicated, the diagrams get more useful. So as I've shared in previous videos, I often draw my slope in on my free body diagram in pencil just to help me get the angles correct for the diagram. This is FG, force of gravity or weight. This is the normal force. The normal force acts 90 degrees or perpendicular to the surface. So FN or big N. Then what's important to note is that there is nothing pulling this object up the slope. There's no applied force pulling the object this way. Nothing whatsoever. So we don't have anything like that. What we do have, though, is the fact that the trolley is rolling down the slope. Now, think about this grade 12s. What would cause the trolley to move or roll down the slope? I hope you're saying gravity or force of gravity. If you're saying that you're correct, almost 100% correct, remember FG can be broken up into two components. FG perpendicular, and this is the important one, FG parallel. Now it is actually FG parallel, the parallel component of the force that is resulting in the object sliding down the slope. Think about it like this, the object is going this way. The thing that is pulling the object down the slope must be a force going that way. And look at which way FG parallel is pointing. It's pointing down the slope and it is parallel to the slope. Now the object is moving down the slope as indicated. So the displacement of the object is going this way. I'm not drawing that in as a force on my free body diagram. I'm just showing you the direction in which the trolley is moving, the displacement. Because the trolley is moving down the slope, friction acts in the opposite direction of the motion. Friction, kinetic friction, is acting up the slope like that because the object's moving down. Then I erase my slope. The slope is just there to help me. And now I can actually get into the question. Remember in the previous video, I explained that calculating the net force, the way that I do this is I use the method to calculate net work, sorry, net work by first calculating the net force. Remember your formula for work on your formula sheet, the formula for work, it says W is equal to F delta X cos theta. So if I'm looking for net work, so if this is net work, the F that I can use here to help me get net work in one shot is F net. So I'm going to be using that formula, F net multiplied by delta X multiplied by cos theta. And that's going to be equal to the change in kinetic energy, which as you should know is half mass final velocity squared minus half mass initial velocity squared. Remember, change is always final minus initial. So our first important thing to do, we've drawn our free body diagram. We've looked at what we have. I need to find F net. And to find F net, I will be making use of my free body diagram. So if you struggle with this part of the sum, calculating the net force, it means that you need to definitely go revise your Newton's law sections. But F net 
is equal to ma. That's according to Newton's second law. But we also know that to get this part of the equation, f net is also equal to the sum of the forces on the object, the vector addition, vector sum. And in this case, the net force of the object is acting in the parallel direction like this, parallel to the slope, up, down the slope. So in other words, if we look at our slope or our picture, our net force is acting in this direction. It is not acting in the perpendicular direction like this. So the object doesn't move in this direction. It moves up, down, okay, well, down, but in that general direction. So the forces that will therefore affect the net force will be Fg parallel and Fk. Remember, we broke up Fg into components, so we don't consider that. Fk is parallel, Fg parallel is parallel. We do not care about the perpendicular forces. So F net is equal to Fg parallel plus Fk, friction. Now, we always start off with a plus sign. We need to choose a positive direction when working with vectors. Forces, F net, forces are vectors. So we need to consider a positive direction. So I'm going to choose, because the object is moving down the slope, I'm going to choose down the slope as my positive direction, okay? What that means is that Fg parallel will be positive. Now, how do you calculate Fg parallel? I've reminded you in different videos, but it's mass times gravitational acceleration times sin of the angle of the slope. For this formula, theta is the angle of the slope. So let's go look. We said the slope was 30 degrees. So here theta is 30. The mass of the object is 2 kilograms, it's given over there. So 2 multiplied by gravitational acceleration, 9.8, and sin, 30. My slope is 30. I'm going to substitute that right in over there. I don't have to work out what it is. I'm just going to substitute it in. And remember, because I chose down the slope as positive, and Fg parallel is going down the slope, this is going to be positive. Then friction, on the other hand, is negative. Why? Because it's going up the slope. And in my example, up the slope is the negative direction. So frictional force is 6. So I'm going to subtract 6. And that gets me 3.8 newtons. And it comes out as a positive, which means that my net force is going down the slope. How do I know it's going down? because I chose down the slope as positive and this number came out as a positive on my calculator. Okay, so my net force is going down the slope. And just by the way, if you're still confused about this formula, you can memorize this. Fg parallel, we will always calculate using this formula. Right, so now we are ready to substitute into my work energy theorem formula. Just as a reminder, we've now got F net, 3,8. So F net, to calculate W net, we need F net is 3,8. How far did we move? What was my displacement? They say 1.5 meters, so 1.5. Now, in the W net formula, this theta over here, this one over here, is the angle between the net force and my displacement. So remember, we discussed that the net force is going down the slope. But the box, the object, the trolley, whatever, the car, is also moving down the slope. So they have no angle between them, zero angle. The angle between them is zero degrees. This confuses students, but the trolley is moving down the slope. The net force is acting down the slope. There's no angle between them. It's not like the net force is going this way, but the trolley is moving this way or something like that. Okay, I hope that makes sense. And then that is equal to half. The mass of the, of the trolley is 2. The final velocity is what we're looking for. So Vf squared is my unknown. Then again, my mass is 2. And my initial velocity is 0 because they said that the trolley was initially held at the top of the plane. So somebody was holding it up here. It was initially stationary. So you work this out in your calculator. You get 5.7 on this side. Then half of 2 is 1. So we got 1 Vf squared on this side and this term is 0. And then we square root 5.7 and that gets me my final velocity or my final speed. And I get 2,39 meters per second calculating velocity or actually speed. So I don't need a direction. 
I hope that that was helpful. Check out the links below for more work energy power videos. I'll see you in another one very soon, everyone. Bye.